So it was a large data set. You can imagine we had dozens of interviews every day, dozens of lessons of lesson observations of all sorts of different age groups, different contexts. Um, so we collated that, Mari, Amy, and myself, working with people at the British Council, we put all of that together, and we tried to look at patterns across the different data sets and across the different countries. We, we weren't trying to pin down a set of practices that occurred in Iraq, Kurdistan, that were somehow different to a set of practices that occurred in Lebanon. We really wanted to look at what were the common patterns across what people do. Um, if resilience is operating at that individual and community level, then there's clearly going to be some kind of overlap in those practices. So it, it wasn't about saying that Arabic serves a specific function across all of those contexts, but really trying to look at how Arabic for different kinds of Arabic speakers will have different uses in different contexts. So it was, it was quite a long, hard way of working with a lot of data, but we felt this was ultimately going to give us what we required, which was some overarching principles that weren't necessarily purely about the contexts that we went into, but could be sort of replicable across other contexts. And as I've said before, but I will, I will mention it again, it wasn't looking at proficiency as such. It wasn't looking at language extracted as a, as a set of systems and signs that are kind of um, the same across these different settings, but it was very much about what people do with all of the languages in their repertoire at particular stages of their um, trajectories or their journeys. 